Hey there, how's it going? My name is Gabriel. I'm here in Healy. Healy is the town that Chris McCandless hitchhiked to and ultimately hiked out into the wilderness out that way. The town stretches off out there a little bit. It is not really a proper town. It is more like a sort of random scattered uh, area of buildings and a few businesses. And as you can see, lots of abandoned and messed up vehicles. There's a road right over there. I thought this would be a good spot to uh, start this video out of the wind a little bit and in an interesting location. Fall is here in Alaska, as you can see, and yet it is only September 4th, 2017. Fall comes early here, and it's also just over 25 years since Chris McCandless was found in a sleeping bag, dead in a bus out that way. I'm going to be covering a lot in this video. However, it might not be exactly what uh, you were expecting because I will not be hiking out to the bus itself because it is a very intense and arduous journey that I am not able to make at this time. It is about 35 miles out that way. The Stampede Trail starts as a road a few miles up there and then heads west in that direction towards the bus. It goes about 15 miles or so, and then from there you have to start hiking. It is 20 miles one way to get to the bus involving two river crossings, one of which is very difficult, the Teklanika River, which is the one that ultimately prevented Chris from being able to come back out of the wilderness and forced him to go back to the bus. Seven years ago, a woman drowned trying to cross that river, so it is not something that you take lightly. You have to uh, be prepared, have the right gear, and preferably have company because it is bear country. It takes three to four days minimum, and even though I'm a backpacking and outdoors enthusiast and would love to be able to make that journey, I am not able to do it now for one thing because I am working. The uh, employee housing that I'm living in is just a few minutes walk that way. But I promise that you will not be disappointed by this video because it is going to be very interesting and informative and I will in fact be visiting the Into the Wild bus. The bus that was used in the movie Into the Wild which is just a 10 minute walk that way. Sitting in front of a bar, the 49th State Brewery, the actual bus that was used in the movie and it is very fascinating not only because of the bus itself but because of some of the things that are inside of the bus. And so I will be walking over to that bus in the course of this video. However, there are a lot of things that I need to explain first. So I am a travel vlogger. I uh, travel around the world making uh, videos of my various adventures. About a month ago then I was in Eastern Europe in the Balkans. It was the middle of summer, it was warm, it was amazing, and out of the blue then I all of a sudden decided, you know what, I want to go to Alaska return to Alaska because I have been here before. I actually went to university at the University of Alaska Fairbanks and the University of Alaska Juneau from 1990 to 1992. 1992 was the year that Chris McCandless came out here. I will touch on that more in just a second. And so I came back from the Balkans and uh, flew into California where I am from and then from there caught a flight up to Anchorage, hitchhiked up to Denali and camped here for a week and got a job washing dishes. Was also hoping that I could hike out to the magic bus as it is called and see it for myself in person. I didn't realize at the time how difficult and dangerous of a journey it was to get out there because I didn't realize quite how far it was. Fortunately, I learned that the replica used in the movie was just a few minutes walk away and I am now going to start walking in that direction. That is a road that dead ends at a riverbed. I hiked there yesterday. Interesting exploring around here. And so in spring of 1992, then I was going to university in Juneau on the panhandle of Alaska and I had a job secured up here in Denali for the second time. As I mentioned that I went to university in Fairbanks in 1990 to 1991 and I had a job working in Denali in the summer of 1991. Summer of 1992 I had another job up here and from Juneau I took the ferry up to Haines, Alaska and then hitchhiked from Haines into Canada, through Canada and ultimately to Denali National Park. That was just a couple of weeks or so after Chris McCandless had hitchhiked part of the same route. And so I was a week or two behind him. He came here to Healy on April 28th of 1992. I was still in Juneau at that point. A couple weeks later left and hitchhiked up here. I spent the uh, summer in the park and sometime at the end of the summer then I heard about a man that had died out here in a bus. Just a scant little uh, explanation of what had happened and thought, wow, that's weird. For one thing, it was not the first person to die in Denali National Park that summer because a employee for the company that I work for went on a backpacking trip on his weekend 
and never returned. They went searching for him and found him at his camp. He had died of exposure. I'm not exactly sure why, cold or what, but anyways, there were two deaths in the area that summer of young men hiking out in the wilderness. And so here we are at the Parks Highway. Fairbanks is a couple of hours drive north. Anchorage is about four and a half to five hours drive south. Denali National Park is other side of those mountains there. And this is Glorious Huey. There is no real center to the town. There's just various businesses and homes scattered about. And the Into the Wild bus is just a few minutes walk this way. And what an amazing day it is. And there it is. The replica of the magic bus in front of the 49th state brewery. Alaska was the 49th state to join the Union of the United States. And here we got some directional signs. Anchorage, 187 miles to the south. Fairbanks, 76 miles to the north. Mount McKinley, which is now called Denali, 83 miles that way. Sarah Palin's house. North Pole, 79 miles. That seems uh, a little bit close. That is referring to the town North Pole, not the actual North Pole. And here we have Magic Bus, 35 miles. Fairbanks City Transit System, bus number 142. It's gonna be a big job. <laughs> a little bit. It might cost a little money too. Um, do you want me a passenger? Yeah, sure. You gonna drive it? Yeah. All right. Let's get going. See if this thing fires up. Okay, go ahead and drive us. <laughs> And so here we have a really cool timeline of the story of Chris McCandless starting from when he left Fairbanks. A couple of postcards that he sent April 27th, 1992. Hey guys, this is the last communication you shall receive from me. I now walk out to live amongst the wild. Take care. It was great knowing you. Alexander, as in Alexander Supertramp, his alter ego. Stampede Trailhead, April 28th, 1992. The entry in Alex's log this day reads, Exit Fairbanks, Sitting Galleon, that is the man that he got a uh, ride hitchhiking with. Rabbit Day, I guess he caught a rabbit. And there he is, in the snow, just a few miles that way. At the time, I was still in Juneau, and getting ready to start hitchhiking a week or so later. Stampede Trail Camp, he camped there April 29th, 1992. The magic bus, he finds it on May 1st. You can see the 142, same number as this bus here, so it is a very close uh, duplicate. Fairbanks City Transit Center. Two years he walks the earth. No phone, no pool, no pets, no cigarettes. Ultimate freedom, an extremist. An aesthetic voyager whose home is the road. Escaped from Atlanta, thou shalt not return, cause the west is the best. 
And now, after two rambling years, comes the final and greatest adventure, the climatic battle to kill the fire burning within, and victoriously continue the spiritual revolution. Ten days and nights of freight trains and hitching bring him to the great white north, no longer to be poisoned by civilization. He flees and walks alone upon the land to become lost in the wild. Alexander Supertramp, May 1992. Inside bus 142, comforts of home. Brown Bear Day, after days of travel and being out in the elements, Alex takes it easy in his new home. On this day, he observes a grizzly bear in its natural environment. There he is exploring the area. Exit bus, so I guess he left and went uh, out wandering. Black bear, ptarmigan. Squirrels and ptarmigan, some things that he caught there, it looks like, because he began uh, living off the wild. He had uh, very little provisions with him. Chris Bags Bird, May 28th, 1992. Gourmet duck, a feast. Porcupine, ptarmigan, four squirrel, gray bird. And some berries there, it looks like. Lingonberries. Continued success. He looks pretty stoked there. June 4th, 1992. Porcupine portrait. Wow, that is an interesting picture. Moose. June 9th, 1992. That is the day that he shoots and kills a moose. Alex shoots and kills a moose, expecting it to be an immediate source of abundant meat. The meat could provide the protein he needs to regain his strength and the nourishment he needs to sustain him for his remaining time in the backcountry. An arduous process, trying to uh, butcher the moose. Cooking dinner. End moose. While cooking the remainder of the moose meat in the wood stove on the bus, Alex regains his perspective on the event, which causes him such emotional turmoil, the loss of most of the moose meat to the maggots. Point of no return. Where? The Teklanika River, heading east on Stampede Trail. July 4th, 1992. Beaver Dam. Disaster. Four squirrel. After a grueling day spent hiking around beaver dams, which have turned the trail into a lake, an even worse sight meets Alex's eyes. The river that he had crossed easily at the end of April is now a deep and turbulent horror. A failed and frightening effort to cross convinces him it is running much too high and fast to cross safely. This is uh, Alex Supertramp, otherwise known as Chris McCandless, who hiked out to this bus 25 years ago, and yes, he ate this stuff. Did he die? He died. Because of these red things? It's complicated. Not because of those specific berries, I don't think, but something else that he ate while he was out there. Not rotten meat, but because of uh, some kind of a seed that he ate that he shouldn't have eaten. Back to 142, the 142 bus, just west of the Teklanika River. July 4th, 1992. Beaver dams abound in tranquil waters west of the Teklanika River. Crossing this river is necessary to his escape, but the river Alex needs to cross is moving at too ferocious a pace. The impassibility of the Teklanika forces him to return to the bus, where he will at least have shelter until a second crossing can be attempted in a few weeks. Unexpected turn of events. A moose in the lake there. Even though he is surrounded by unmatched beauty, Alex understands the gravity of the situation in which he finds himself. This is recorded in the concerned voice of his journal entry. Potato seeds. While Alex continues to forage for food, he reads Leo Tolstoy's novel, The Death of Ivan Ilyich, and begins Michael Crichton's novel, The Terminal Man. His meal consists of a variety of plants and animals he gathers daily, including seed pods from the wild potato. Chris's Alaska Journal. Day one, exit Fairbanks, sitting galleon, hitchhiking with Jim Galleon, rabbit day. All the way through. Day 100, made it, but in weakest condition of life. Death looms as serious threat, too weak to walk out. Have literally become trapped in the wild, no game. And then, Attention possible visitors, SOS, I need your help. I am injured, near death, and too weak to hike out of here. I am all alone, this is no joke. In the name of God, please remain to save me. I am out collecting berries close by and shall return this evening. Thank you, Chris McCandless, August. Farewell. Where, the clearing outside bus 142, when August 13th, 
1992. Chris's last journal entry is made on the 13th of August. The remaining entries in the daily log mark time with a single line until the end. His final farewell is written on a blank page torn from Louis Lemoore's memoir, Education of a Wandering Man. On the reverse side of this page is a section from Robinson Jeffers' poem, Wise Men in Their Dark Hours. I have had a happy life and thank the Lord. Goodbye and may God bless all.